Hey friends, welcome back to our channel, Marcio here. In this video, we're gonna go for a deep dive on Amazon EC2 or Amazon Web Services Elastic Cloud Computing. Let's gonna take a look on the console, on the configurations, how to launch a new instance, all the ins and outs on how to manage and work with virtual machines on AWS Cloud. So without further ado, let's deep dive in it. And here we have our AWS console. As you guys can see, there are many options here and we are going to focus on the EC2 or Elastic Cloud Computing. I have set up this account previously and it's quite easy. If you guys wanna set up your own account, just open our browser and type AWS console and there will be a link like this one so you can just follow this step by step and sign up it's really simple easy and aws will give you one year of free tier so you can do your tests and explore as much as you want let's get back here to the console and let's go to ec2 the ec2 console is gonna show us a page where we have all the controls for creating and managing instances as you guys can see here i have here the resources where it says how many instances i have the ip addresses the key pairs i have so those keys to ssh to the machines placement groups snapshots dedicated hosts number of instances again load balancer security groups volumes and so on so this is the quick overview of all resources we have on the EC2. Here on the left hand side, we have all the remaining options. The EC2 dashboard is this page here. It's the main page where we are right now. Uh, events, all events for EC2 instances. Tags, we can give each resource a specific tag or a custom tag. So we can manage tags here. That helps a lot whenever we want to filter those resources by tags. We have here also limits where we have all the available limits for outscaling, group configurations, and a few other options as well. Extremely important here is instances. It's gonna show all the instances we have. I have a test instance here, which I'm gonna terminate, which means I'm gonna delete this instance. So this instance will not be able to come back to life as I'm killing it for good. And it's gonna show all the instances on this page here. After that, we have instance types. It's gonna show a list of all available and all possible instance types Amazon offers for us. It's just gonna take a little bit here to load because there are so many. I'll be back whenever it's done. And now we got our instances here. As you guys can see, there are many, many options here and they have different configurations, different amount of memory, storage, also network bandwidth as well. And they also give us the price difference from each one of them. So it's gonna be easy to calculate here the amount that's gonna cost per month for each of these instances. So it's quite handy. And as you guys can see here, we have 13 pages plus on this page here. And yeah, there are lots of options here. We can have launch templates, which is a kind of recipe on how an instance should be configured, uh, the amount of memory, the disk, uh, network, and so on and so forth. So given that template, we can simply create new instances based on that template. And all the instances will have the same exactly format as from the template, which is quite handy. Spot requests, this option is awesome. Let me go to that page. And what are spot instances? They said Amazon EC2 spot instances let you take advantage of unused EC2 capacity in the AWS cloud. That means that AWS has this bunch of machines, they have lots of data centers and lots of stuff going on in there. And sometimes they have some spare capacity that nobody's using. Instead of leaving those machines and those resources there sitting on the side, they simply sell those resources and that capacity for a lower price and that lower price can be up to 70% of discount on the original value. So it's extremely profitable for them because they are simply selling something that nobody's using. And that's extremely useful and cost effective for us because we can buy those resources for that beautiful discount. The only caveat here is that AWS can claim those resources at any time they want. The spot instances, they are most appropriated for those kind of workloads that can be restarted such as a batch processing or a CI-CD pipeline. So things that are stateless and it's not mission critical and doesn't have to be running 24 by seven. But it is an extremely 
nice and good option for those kinds of workloads. Let me get back to our main page here. They also offer saving plans. Anyone can purchase things in advance and they can give some discounts as well. And they say that it can be up to 72%, which is amazing. So if your project or your workload, you have some forecasts of usage, this one might be a good option for saving money. We can also have reserved instance, so we can reserve some instances there as well. Also dedicated hosts, let's say our application or our applications, they need to run on isolation, so nobody else can share the same host. This is the right option to go for. We can also schedule instances anytime we want. We can also have capacity reservation, so we can reserve some capacity as well. Other options here are images. You can create new machine images and leave it here just for views. Another good option here is the Elastic Block Store. So volumes or disks, we can create and configure volumes or disks. We can also take snapshots from existing disks as backups. There is also a lifecycle manager here. And another important option here is the networking and security. We have the networking and security configuration here where we define all of our security groups or firewalls. I have a predefined one here, which I'm going to delete. For example, that is the default that I'm just gonna leave. But this one here I have created previously and I'm gonna delete this one. So yeah, I'm not gonna use this and I can delete because I can recreate it later on. These are all the rules that uh, we'll need for our instances, such as inbound and outbound rules. So everything that can come in and everything that goes out from that instance. Uh, what else you have? You have Elastic IP addresses. So all the IP addresses we have allocated. Placement groups, key pairs, uh, all of those keys we have. I have only one key here that I have created previously. Network interfaces, load balancers. I can create a new load balancer just to balance the load on or balance those requests that I have and redirect those requests to the target groups. And the target groups are basically all the instances I have or all the well, target services I, I want to redirect those requests to get handled. And lastly here we have the auto-scaling configuration. So you can create auto-scaling configurations and once uh, our instance reaches um, those limits, then AWS will create new virtual machines to serve our requests. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's the basic stuff. Let's go back here to the dashboard view. And I'm going to create now a new instance. So I'm going to go here to instances. Uh, I have this instance here, which I terminated. And I'm going to launch a new instance because we're going to do some cool stuff. We're going to do some hacking and install a few things and do some tests on our brand new instance. So let's go. I'm going to launch instances. And this page here gives us a few options or many options, to be honest. We can have a number of instances. So I'm just going to launch one single instance. And I'm going to give this instance a new name. So I need to assign a name that's going to be my demo instance. Next step here is the application and operating system. I can choose a few different operating systems. I'm going to go for Amazon Linux because that's their preferred operating system. They have some custom stuff done there. Could be Mac OS, Ubuntu, Windows, Red Hat, SUSE Linux, or a Debian. But I'm going to go with Amazon Linux. Yeah, they say here what is the machine type. And yeah, this one is eligible for the free tier, so I won't be paying anything. And that's it. Next step is the instance type. I'm going to go for a T2 Micro, which I'm going to get one vCPU and one gigabyte of memory. That's going to be more than enough for our tests. There is also a instance comparison here, if you guys want to go there. And uh, it's going to show all the different types and compare all the instances. Key pair, I can choose the key pair I created previously or I can also create a new key pair if I want. I'm just gonna go with the existing one. And here we have the network settings. So this is my VPC or my virtual private cloud. That's gonna be some kind of a mini data center that is controlled by my account. So it's all isolated from everything else. And I'm gonna tell it to create a new security group. You guys saw that I have deleted my previous one. I'm gonna say, okay, just create this new security group, which will have all the rules I need 
to define for this virtual machine. And I will allow SSH traffic because I may want to SSH to that box. And the mask here is anywhere, so I can SSH from anywhere. I'm also gonna allow HTTPS and HTTP traffic because I want to have a web server there, for example. Uh, we can also create other custom rules and we'll be seeing that um, later on. Uh, storage, uh, I'm just gonna go with the default, uh, which is eight gigabytes of disk space. And yeah, we don't need anything more than that for this test. And lastly here, we have the advanced details. There are lots of options here that I'm not gonna cover because that goes beyond this tutorial, but we can request spot instances here, for example, and we can have loads of other more fine-grained configurations here for our instance, which I'm not gonna go there. You guys can take a look on your own account if you want. And I believe I'm good to launch this instance here. So I'm gonna click here, it's gonna create the configuration and now it's gonna start creating the machine. And I'll be back once the machine is ready. Okay, our virtual machine is ready. Now let's take a look here. So it's our demo instance, which has an instance ID, which is auto assigned. And the state is running. The type is teacher micro, this is the one I previously chose, and also it gives us a public IP address and also a private IP address. This can be accessed internally and externally to the AWS network. Let me click here on the instance ID, and then we have this page describing all the details about that instance, which looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna connect to that instance because I wanna install a web server there. I have nothing here. If I try to open that IP address, there will be nothing there, so yeah. Uh, it's gonna say it cannot be reached. I have HTTP here, just uh, increase the font. Yeah, HTTP and HTTPS, they don't work because there is nothing there. But I'm gonna connect now and yeah, it's an SSH via browser. Uh, I will establish the connection and then I'm gonna install a patch to on this box. So pretty cool. Uh, where am I? I'm on the root folder and we have this tab here which says the machine name or ID and then the machine name here. Also it gives us the public and private IP addresses. I'm gonna close here because I have this information on the other page here. Let me go back. Yeah, I have this information on this page here. Now I'm gonna install a patch. So that's gonna be a sudo yum install httpd. This is a patch. And it's gonna ask me to confirm. Yes, I want to install and shouldn't take long. It's done now. I'm gonna simply start the Apache system uh, with, with using system control ctl and start httpd. I have started. Now, next step is to make sure it is running let me clear my screen and instead of uh, start, I'm gonna say status. Just give me the status of this service. And yes, it is running. Pretty cool, pretty nice. We can see here. Let me synchronize a little bit more. Yeah. If I try now, just running HTTP on that IP address, it's gonna work because I have that service running on my machine and it is externally visible. Pretty nice. I don't want a patch anymore. Let me remove a patch. Instead of install, I'm gonna say remove. And it's gonna ask me if I really want to remove. I say yes. And I'm gonna create another web server here. Let me create a new folder here. It's gonna be a web app. And I think I have Python here. I'm gonna create a Flask application. Yes, I do have Python here. And I'm gonna create this virtual environment here just to isolate from the global Python. So I don't wanna mess up with um, that Python. So I have my own here. Let me see. And now I'm gonna activate that virtual environment so I can install all the necessary software I need on my isolated Python version. Okay, I have uh, activated here. Now I'm gonna install Flask which is a web framework for Python, so I can write my web application. It's good, it's done now. 
Now I'm going to create here my application. It's going to be app.py and I'm going to uh, simply to paste here all the code I need and that should be good to go. Now I'm going to run my application. It's going to be flask run dash dash host equals to zero 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 zero. That's going to make the application visible outside this machine. And there we go. We have our application running and the port is 5000. Now let's try accessing this application from the browser. And let me go to HTTP and the port is 5000. We're not going to be able to succeed on our attempt because as you guys remember, I have only opened the port 22, 80 and 443 because that's SSH, HTTP and HTTPS. I still have to open the port number 5000 in there, which is going to, yeah, it's going to time out. And now we can go back to the instance here and open that port on the security tab. And we have here um, the security groups inbound rules. So we're going to click on the security group and we can edit the inbound rules. We're going to add a new rule for that port 5000. Let me add a new rule. Yeah, it's better. Add a new rule. That's going to be custom TCP because that's going to be a TCP connection. And the port is 5000. And that request can come from anywhere. This is the proper mask. And then I can save this new rule. It should take a few seconds to take place. And let's try again. Yeah, now I have here hello world. So it works perfectly. As you guys could see, it is quite easy and simple to manage uh, instances here and manage virtual machines using the AWS EC2 console. And I hope you guys have enjoyed my video. Please do not forget to like my video, subscribe to my channel and also click on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my videos. And I'll see you guys next time.